Uh-huh. You were with the president in Tulsa last week, right? You heard how passionately he spoke about voting rights, uh, how central this is to how he views his presidency, his leadership, the future of our democracy. This president has based his administration on equity and equality. And now the issue of voting rights is in our face. We are voting without the full protections of the 1965 Voting Rights Act because of Shelby v. Holder, but it's also unraveling because of states. And the person that seems to be holding it up is Joe Manchin. Is the president planning to specifically speak with him about voting, it's not, not including it with infrastructure or anything, is he planning on speaking with him specifically on voting rights, particularly after this morning's virtual meeting with civil rights leaders who say the conversation will continue? Well, well first let me say that it was encouraging to see Senator Manchin meeting with civil rights uh, groups Today, uh, the meeting shows that both are serious and recognize the importance of the issue. We certainly know the seriousness that many civil rights groups take with voting rights and the importance of moving this forward. Uh, and as indicated in both of their readouts, as you said, April, they will continue the discussion. I, I would certainly expect that when the president has a conversation with Senator Manchin the next time, they'll talk about voting rights. Um, and uh, But often when he speaks with members, he talks about a range of issues, somewhere you work together, somewhere you disagree. Understanding the history of how presidents decide to lean in, he's got um, uh, Vice President Harris putting this in her for- portfolio. But when will the president begin to lean in? Is there a moment where he has to himself lean in on this? Because if it doesn't happen before the next elections, it looks like it could be a done deal. Well, April, you were with the president in Tulsa last week, right? You heard how passionately he spoke about voting rights, uh, how central this is to how he views his presidency, his leadership, the future of our democracy. I mean, that was central to the message he delivered uh, in a speech that was widely covered, uh, that was reflecting on a moment in history that hasn't requ- hasn't been given the, the attention that it certainly deserves. I, I certainly would not say we're waiting. As I noted, we're going to continue to press for federal action, for action uh, to move forward on a bill that the president would love to sign into law. Uh, We certainly know we can't do that with a magic wand. That's not how democracy works, for good reason. Uh, But the president also signed this executive action uh, early on, a very expansive and powerful executive action, because he wanted to, uh, did not want to delay a moment in ensuring that we were taking more steps to assist states, to improve and modernize vote.gov, to increase federal employees' access to voting, to analyze barriers to voting for a range of people. And that was an action he took er early on. We're continuing continuing to implement now. And I'll also note that the vice president, asking his vice president, his partner, to play a role in leading this, something that she also asked for, just to be clear, uh, asked to do, it sends a message about what a priority this is to the president. They have regular lunches. They engage. She's the first in the room and the last in the room. And she's going to not hesitate either, not delay either, I should say. When she comes back from her trip, she'll be convening people uh, and she will be elevating these issues as well uh, from her platform.